I'd, I'd been a defense attorney for a number of years and decided that maybe it would make more sense to try to enforce the law instead of get people off. So I ran for county attorney and was elected county attorney and then uh, later on moved from there to be the chief deputy at the attorney general's office. And those spots allowed me to, to see some things that were really quite significant. I worked on the case where a little girl in Washington Terrace had been sexually molested and killed. Then another case that involved a serial rapist in Ogden who raped a whole lot of people. And I sat down with those two victims, the mother of the little girl that was killed and uh, one of the, the rape victims. Because from my end, as the prosecutor, it had been very successful. We caught the bad guy, uh, we prosecuted him, we convicted him, we sent him to prison. Uh, in one case, uh, the man was sentenced to a death penalty. But I wanted to find out what they thought about all of that. As I talked to them, their responses were about the same. Uh, they said, well, we appreciate the fact that you caught the bad guy and that you, you convicted him and put him in jail. Uh, but the process of going through that trial and preparation for trial was horrendous. When Reed stepped in, I think he legitimized uh, the role of victims in the criminal justice system and the importance that they have to that system. I think he firmly believed that their participation was necessary and the participation resulted in a better justice system. In addition, we passed several constitutional amendments to the Utah Constitution that provide for the, the rights of victims uh, and then a whole lot of laws that try to support those rights so that uh, hopefully when people go through that system now, uh, they're treated vastly different than what they were uh, back in the, the 80s when I first started my prosecution work. One day I was, I was called down to the Ogden Police Department, which was in the, the basement of the old city county building, to, to talk to a little girl who had been sexually molested. And as I walked in, I could see this little girl, she was five or six years old, sitting in front of the desk with a great big burly detective behind the desk trying to uh, find out from the little girl what had happened. At the same time he was talking to her, uh, there was a rapist in the next cubicle over talking to another detective uh, and uh, a real nasty looking gang member in, uh, in the desk at the other side. Uh, it wasn't surprising that that little girl was so scared she wasn't able to say a thing. And they were frustrated. They said, how do we prosecute this case when this girl won't talk to us? Then I, I was at a training and saw that a, a person his name's Bud Kramer, had started back in Huntsville, Alabama, a thing that he called a Child Advocacy Center, which was actually a, a separate building that they purchased a house, and they'd remodeled that house to look like Grandma's house, uh, and that's where they conducted all of their child abuse investigations. And instead of the child having to go to the prosecutor's office and the police department uh, and the, uh, the therapist's office, uh, and the doctor's office, all of those services were brought to the child at, uh, at what they call the Child Advocacy Center. So we decided we wanted one of those for ourselves. The first center opened up in Weber County in 1991, and now it has grown to 20 statewide. Reed is just one of these untiring people who is curious about everything, wants to help wherever he sees problems, and always has done that. Reed and Martha are just the perfect couple. Once our children were born, a friend suggested I might want to get involved with other things in the community. And I said yes, and it turned out to be my first meeting at the Junior League of Ogden. The Junior League saw a need to step in and help children who were victims and needed to go to court, and there was no one to go with them. I was hired to write a grant where um, a teen crisis line would be established for and manned by, by teenagers. That was an amazing opportunity to work with some high caliber, committed young people within Weber County. Martha is an educator and a very good educator. And we invited her to be on the United Way board and she's been just super. Most of our focus at United Way now has to do with educating kids and getting kids ready for kindergarten and up to reading level by third grade. She is able to go through our programs and identify places where there are gaps that we need to make improvements and she's just been immensely helpful in helping us build a strong educational minded community. Martha and Reed are examples of exactly what Henry David Thoreau meant when he said that one is not born into this world to do everything, but to do something. 